Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Heavy Rain. This is part two, and I believe this was just me having a look at the bonuses you get in the game. This is just concept art, so I'm not going to bother with it. So, yeah, moving on from where we left off. We're back with Ethan Mars, who's undergoing the Rorschach test. The butterfly. And me just trying to a fox. pick answers for these, uh, what these ink blocks look like. A crab. Ink blocks, from. That is blatantly Death. the Grim Reaper. Oh, I don't call me creepy for saying that. It's got two sides. Death. So, yeah. He's gone to see a shrink. I have the results of your MRI scan. Everything seems to be normal. There is no physical damage from the accident. However, I am worried about your psychological condition. I know it's not easy, but you've got to start over, Ethan. You're not responsible for what happened. It's my fault Jason is dead. He'd still be alive if I'd been looking out for him. He'd be alive if you taught him how to cross a road. It was an accident. Accidents happen every day. You can't blame yourself forever for your son's death. How is Sean? He's a very solitary kid, you know, very focused within himself. He's really close to his mother. With me, he's more distant. And what about you, Ethan? What do you feel? I no longer want to live. I have no reason to continue. Not even for your son, Sean. I couldn't save Jason. Sean doesn't need a father like me. Is there something else you wanted to tell me, Ethan? I sometimes have these blackouts. Times when See, he uses the plural. I so that one we had later, wasn't the only one he's had. But I'm someplace else. And so he's been I having no these how I got there. psychotic episodes. You think this could be related to the accident? You suffered a massive for some time, in a coma and this is the months. first time he's told his really psychiatrist about them. A shock like that can have on the brain. And the psychiatrist does nothing. That's the end of this session. Uh, we'll continue this conversation next week. I mean, that... That's serious, isn't it? Like, very serious? You were lucky, Ethan. It's very rare to survive such a traumatic accident. He has blackouts. I don't exactly he doesn't like know after. what he's doing. He woke up in the middle of a road. I mean, even ignoring the origami figure and the things like that that imply he's a serial killer. He woke up in the middle of the road, he could have been killed, and the psychiatrist just does nothing. Anyway, How so we're at a park today? with Sean. They teach her yell at me for being late again. She's gonna send me home the next time it happens. I'm sorry about that, Sean. Next time, we'll really pull it together, okay? I don't know whether it's supposed to be my fault that he's late. Did he like oversleep Aren't because he was too late to bed kids? or something, or maybe that was inevitable? I don't know. I don't feel like it. The game makes you feel guilty a lot, and I'm not really, sh without looking it up, you I'm not sure something? what I could have avoided and, and and what was scripted. Is something the matter, Sean? No, I'm all right. I haven't been on a seesaw in a long time. What do you think? Yeah! Mood whiplash as the depressed and miserable kids suddenly like, yeah, seesaw, cool! So, yeah. Come on, Dad, make me fly! It's just a seesaw, kid. Let's not get overexcited here.
Uh, excuse me while I wander off in search of other interactive items. Just a merry go round. I bet I can push you so fast you won't be able to stay on it. Great. Go on, Daz, as fast as you can. He's finding little shit, isn't he? All right, I'm faster. pressing X as fast as I can. Faster, faster. <laughs> Whoa! I think my head is spinning. Good, Good training for astronauts, though. <laughs> You want to go play on the swing? I'll push you. Okay. Tedium in the form of world building. And me failing. You're not pushing dead. I was thinking at this point that he might like to go on the carousel, and indeed he does, but you can't offer him that, you have to wait, you have to tell him to leave, and then wait for him to ask himself. Thus, you know, that's logical. I'll find something else to do with him. It's getting dark. It might start to rain soon. Fascinating thoughts there. And Sean has disappeared. Except he hasn't, he's just back on the bench. Look, don't wander off. Bad things Looks happen. Like rain's coming. I think we better go. Okay. You know, sometimes I remember before, I mean, when Jason was still here, sometimes I wish everything could just be the way it was before. Me too, Sean. Me too. Come on, Dad, what are you doing? I'm coming. Carousel? Can I? Sure. Go pick a horse and get on. I'll get a ticket. One, please. That's a dollar. Ethan picks a great time to have another blackout. 
See, this is my point. He's a responsible father. And he has a blackout. And wanders off. And almost gets one over because I suck at quick time events. What doctor would just let him... What doctor would not see this as a problem? He just almost died again and now he's got no idea where his other son is. I really question the validity of this guy's doctorate. Because you don't just go, oh, you're having blackouts. Oh well, see you next week. Fucking moron. So yeah, he runs back to the park. To lose one child might be an accident. To lose two would be regarded as carelessness or something like that. Son, where are you? Son! Son! Finds his rucksack and puts it back down. So even if he finds him, he won't be able to do his homework. So, Sean of Sean, we depart and run along streets some more. Back home. another origami figure in his hand. As a blackout, a kid disappears and finds an origami figure in his hand. All the while, well, the, while there's a serial killer called the origami killer on the loose who specialises in children. So, anyway, we move back to the police investigation into the origami killer. Here we are at the local police station. Do you think it's going to take long? No, he should be finished soon. Let's get the formalities out of the way so I can get back some real work. I gotta see Captain Perry. Orders are orders. Gee, I hate internal politics bullshit. God, I'm bored. I hate having nothing to do. I could go for a little Larry time right about now. So we go back into this virtual reality thing he has. Allows him to throw a ball at a wall and look distinctly odd while doing it. I don't know, man, just buy Angry Birds or something. I'm off, Charlene. I'll look at the reports later. I'll cancel all appointments for this afternoon. Okay. Oh, Captain. Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI is here. Jaden, of course. We've been expecting you. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Do you mind tagging along? We can talk as we walk. Yeah, of course. I wanted to introduce myself before getting started, but uh, perhaps there's a better no, time. No, no. Now it's fine. I just have to get to the press conference. We have them every day now. Believe me, it's not always easy finding something to tell them. Fortunately, today we have some news. Have you met Lieutenant Blake yet? 
Yeah, we met this morning. He has his own methods, but he's a good cop. I'm sure you'll get him well together. Do you know how to tie a knot in a necktie? I guess. To be frank with you, I could have done without the FBI on this one, but the press, they're all over us. This origami killer case crept up on us, and it's fast becoming a national concern. There are hundreds of killers in this country, but what do you know? This guy is exotic. He leaves flowers and origami figures. Work that one out. Then the press get onto it, and we suddenly become the center of the universe. I'm here to arrest a serial killer. With all due respect, sir, the rest of it, it's none of my business. No, of course not. All I'm asking is that you make progress, and fast. The press want a perpetrator, and we're gonna have to serve him up on a silver platter. Hmm. Not bad. Oh, go see Charlie and she'll show you to your office. Yeah, check in on the press conference if you're interested. It'll give you an idea of the political climate around here. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the club, Jaden. So we very briefly have a look at this thing. The body of Jeremy Bowles was found this morning on a patch of wasteland in the East End at about 6.30 a.m., five days after he was reported missing. An autopsy will be conducted tomorrow to determine the exact cause of death, but going from first indications, it would seem that he drowned. The state in which the body was found suggests the methodology of the origami killer. The investigation should confirm this in the coming days. The police are continuing to work around the clock to find the murderer as quickly as possible. I'll field some questions. Yes. You said the methodology indicated another victim for the origami killer. Can you be more specific? An origami figure was found in the victim's hand, and an orchid was placed on his chest. His face yeah, was covered in mud, standard. but there were no visible traces methodology? of Methodology? So, wandering around trying to find my office. Incidentally, um, I'm informed by those in the know that the map you just saw there is a map of Philadelphia, New York. So, um, while the location of this game is never mentioned in game, um, it would appear to be Philadelphia. Just in case anyone's interested. Captain Perry is doing his press conference now. Might be interesting to have a look. So, thoughts, blah, 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 Where's the water cooler when you need one? Yeah, I want to say something about the arbitrary restrictions that the game places on actions. We've seen them before, and we're going to see them in future. When I say we've seen them before, I mean that I was able, in the Shelby section, to ask Lauren... I'm ready to start. Maybe we should kick off by talking three about Three out case. of four questions, but not four. For I have some, some work reason. to finish here. Talk about that later, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, no problem. In this particular Just case, know when you're available. I assume it's not particularly urgent to have a glass of water, missing the water cooler that I can now see as has walked past. And so instead, I wander over here to find his office first. Nice watch. Oh, it's the present we offer to our new lieutenants. We bought the same model each year for the past 20 years for each promotion. It optimizes everybody's time, and it's the kind of thing that always goes down well. You can contribute to our fund if you like. We're still a few dollars short. Congratulate Larry on my behalf. I'll be sure to do that, sir. So in this particular case, Captain Perry said you could show me the. I find him his office before, before getting him a drink, and after finding his office, he then can't leave his office to go and get a drink, and so doesn't get a drink. I don't know whether it's significant. It may well not be. Um, This? But it's kind of annoying and arbitrary. Office. That's where I was told to take you. If you need anything, you know where to find And the fact that it was explicitly mentioned in his thoughts indicates that it might be significant. And you'll see something um, to which I think it might okay. be or have been significant in a, in a moment. Anyway, so yeah, here's his uh, shitty little office that they've lumbered wow. in with. More like a big cupboard. 
Well, I wanted a quiet place to work, and it certainly looks like I got it. And he proceeds to shove everything in his office up against the wall. To work in his alley one. environment. Change the office. So you can choose any number of different environments for him to work in, which is kind of cool. You have this rather tranquil and majestic one I chose to work in this one for now So, we start off by going through clues, beginning with the modus operandi of the origami killer. Always the same ritual. An origami in the hand, an orchid on the chest. The victims have always been dead for less than six hours when they were found, which means they remained alive for several days before being drowned. Over 3,500 people questioned, over 100 suspects interrogated. Not a single lead to go on. You can analyze and geo analyze these clues. In this case, analysis yields. The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He is intelligent, calm, and determined. An organized type. He has a car. He's probably employed, but his work allows him free time. We're not privy to the actual information from which he deduces this, but whatever. Origami killer victims. Eight victims in the last three years. All boys, aged between nine and thirteen. No signs of violence. The victims disappear from public places in broad daylight. No one notices anything. Bodies are found three to five days later, drowned in rainwater. There is always a railroad line adjacent to where the bodies are found, and all the victims disappeared in the fall. Killer has a large comfort zone. He gained confidence rapidly and moved away from his base. Hmm, this won't make the geo profiling any easier. So, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Next up, files. Well, well. Looks like there's something new. I'm informed that there's something new because I missed a clue in the last scene. Oh well, game found it anyway. So yeah, mm. analyze orchid. A common species. Blah, blah, blah. That doesn't help much. Symbol of innocence makes sense. You know, children and so on. No prints or specific clues. Hmm. Nothing much to go on.
Tire tracks. Harry, come in. Tire tracks on the side of the road behind the railroad line. It may be the killer's car. Just one origami store in town. On the other hand, it's just folding paper, isn't it? So he could just do the it himself. The orchid is a common species. It can be found at any flower shop. Environment just turns out to be the desktop background. So we've already done that. And map just turns out to be, well, the map. Kind of pointless without anything on it. So that's all for now. Vision starts to go blurry as we're reminded that this guy's a drug addict. Here we go again. I better go wash my face. So at this point you have the option of taking the drug to alleviate the withdrawal symptoms. I need to take some. I'm gonna faint if I resist. Or attempt to get to the bathroom. That's all right. And I'm wondering if no. I'd have had an easier time no, if I'd managed to have something to drink. And here I clearly pressed the wrong option. I did not mean to take the drug. I don't know if I just read the wrong buttons or whatever, but so he takes some of the drug, which is clearly the wrong thing to do. And Ethan Mars turns out turns up. Looks like we're gonna have our first intersection. Of player characters here, but it Blake, Mr. doesn't quite happen. Can you please tell him what happened. It, it was this afternoon. I went to the park with my and son. So we switched Sean. the control we of Ethan, reporting his and then son's he disappearance. To go on the carousel, so I put him on one of the wooden horses, and when I turned back, Sean had disappeared. Exactly what time did you arrive at the park? Try to remember exactly, Mr. Mars. Every detail can be important. It must have been about. And the game tests. A, whether you can remember, and B, whether you can see which fucking buttons are corresponding to yeah, what. I it was exactly about 4.15. What was your son wearing when he disappeared? He was wearing a oh, coat. I couldn't remember at this point. I think it was beige, and I think I said beige. And watching this a video back, coat. it was beige, so yeah, go me, it was beige. And a pair of pants. And the pants were... I can't even remember Green watching pants. the video back. <laughs> My memory sucks. disappeared without you even noticing? Weren't you right by the carousel? Uh, well, I have these psychotic blackouts and... I went for a short walk around the park just for a few minutes. You when can't even back, choose to do the, the decent thing and, and inform the police wasn't there. that he has these blackouts. You say you took your son to the park. Obviously it would make him suspect number one, until but... Why did it take you so long to contact the police? I, I don't know. I don't he know. tells his I doctor... I don't know what to do. Or at least I make him tell his doctor, right. and his doctor That's does nothing, and he doesn't now. tell the police. Free to go, Mr. Mars. We'll continue to look for Sean overnight. We'll contact you if we have any more questions. Do, do you think the origami killer? Listen, your son's probably just run off, and he'll turn up in a couple of hours. But what if it is the origami killer? Well, then we have about four days to find him alive. Lieutenant Carter Blake, Public Relations Department. So yeah, his ex-wife. No, nothing yet. But they're gonna keep looking through the night. Do they? Do they think it's the origami killer? It, it, it's still too early to say. But it is a possibility. What happened, Ethan? How could you lose Sean like that? You should never have taken your eyes off him. 
I mean, for God's sake, how hard is it to keep your eye on a child in the park? Why did you leave him, Ethan? Why? Wasn't it enough losing Jason? Hmm. Low blow. I'm sorry. It's not what I meant to say. I miss him so much. Clearly one of the police officers is playing the piano in his lunch break here. <laughs> so the upbeat and cheerful plot of Heavy Rain continues and we move back to Scott Shelby. The asthmatic PI, who is easily the most likable character in the game. I earned a trophy, I've got to remember. I don't know whether that means I got the questions right or whether it's just something you always get after doing that section. Anyway. Good evening to you, sir. Convenience store. Store is empty. Guess it's that time of day. Well, it's a good time for a quiet little talk. Guy behind the counter? You gotta suppose that's him. Keeps a very clean shop, doesn't he? Excuse me, this crisp spilled in aisle two. Can I help you, sir? Well, I hope so. My name's Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. Uh, I'm investigating the case of the origami killer. I I'd like to ask you a few questions. My son is dead, Mr. Shelby. I have nothing more to say. I also lost someone I loved. I know what you're feeling. Then you will understand that I do not wish to talk about it. The killer has kidnapped another victim. A ten-year-old boy. Like your son, Risa, I have four days before we find his body on a deserted stretch of wasteland. No one did anything to save my son. Now, if you would please to move along, sir. Oh, do you sell inhalers? I'm all out, and at least I won't go away completely empty-handed. In the back of this door, to the right. Thanks. You know, it's really convenient that every time someone's not willing to help Shelby, something bad happens to them and he can come and play the knight in shining armor. Open the register, you dumb fuck! Put the money on the counter! Shit, you deaf or what? So, we try to sneak up on the guy. You do not have the right to steal that money from me. I have worked very hard to earn it. You cannot have it. What did you say? You're out of your fucking mind, man! You don't get it, do you? And I go to try and pick up a frying pan. You don't do what I say now. And I fuck up. Hey you! Come here! I said come here now! Don't move! Hands up! Put your fucking hands up or I'll shoot! Negotiation time. So what are you gonna do? Someone could walk in the store any minute and sound the alarm. Yeah, I haven't got a chance of getting out of this. The first guy to walk in here gets it right in the face. Fuck it, man, you're making me nervous. And when I'm nervous, there's no knowing what I'll do. Uh, my name's Scott. What about you? What's your name? Andrew. My name's Andrew. Useful information for the police, Andrew. Don't panic, let's just stay calm. Nobody here wants to hurt you. Uh, we're all just gonna be cool, and everything will be all right. Yeah. I'm cool, man. Everything's gonna be all fucking right. Look, it's not worth it. Put the gun down and just walk away. You giving me advice? I'll give you some fucking advice. Do 
you have anyone you care for in your life? A, a girlfriend, maybe? A family? Yeah. A little girl. I got a little girl. Her name is Jessica. What would Jessica think if she saw you here? Ask yourself, what would happen to her if things go wrong? Now, I want you to put the gun Maybe back I was in your a pocket and quietly walk that. out of the store. My friend and I will forget about what just happened, and you'll have a second think chance to the and fuck up your the, life. Uh, gun down, Please but say. he kind of doesn't. Nice try. For a second there, you almost had me believing all your shit. However, he then inexplicably points the gun away from Shelby, so we get another asthmatic badass sequence. As I knock the guy out cold. So I was on thank you, sir. I don't know what would After happened. failing to deal with him twice, that was surprisingly this easy. Come by for nothing. Have a nice day. When my boy, Razor, disappeared. I received a letter with a locker ticket inside. Inside the locker, I found this box. I do not understand what it means, but I think it must be a sort of message from the man who took my son from me. But can I? Mysterious message. Please, take the box if it can be of any use to you at all. It did not help me to save Reza, but maybe it will help you find the other little boy. Mr. Shelby! I was beginning to think that there was no good to be found in this place. I can see now that I was wrong. Just, you know, leave the guy there. And now here we are with playable character number four. A woman. First section we've had. That's her. Find her in her rather spacious apartment in the middle of the night. <laughs> Having apparently nodded off in front of the TV. This is one of the creepier sections of the game. Type at random on a laptop and then switch it off. Not sure what that was supposed to be about. I do that sometimes. I just open up a Word document, type a few words at random, and then go away. Okay, that goes down. Somewhere in my list of top 10 creepiest openings of a fridge I've ever seen. Interestingly, it takes about three times as long to microwave a cup of coffee as it did to microwave Sean's chicken dinner. D 
dee dum dee dum Nope. Can't go outside with no trousers on. Wander into a bedroom, attempt to sleep properly. Mysterious noises. Goddamn insomnia. I'm totally exhausted, but I just can't sleep. A hot shower. That'll create the magic of sleep. So we get another shower scene. Totally relevant and necessary to gameplay, and not an example of the male gaze at all. I mean, we got a shower scene with Ethan at the start of the game, I suppose it balances out. See, I would have thought this game was so lacking if it hadn't given me if it hadn't given me the option to choose whether she puts her top on and then her underwear or vice versa. I mean that was a crucial choice that added to my experience in this game. Walks back in, someone clearly runs to the apartment. Apparently having stopped for a snack. I don't know, sometimes you're burgling someone's house and you just get this craving for some cheese, what can I say? So naturally, rather than looking for a way to call the police or exit the apartment, I just go and close the fridge door, because, I mean, the milk will go off, and then... There's someone here. There's someone in the apartment. The phone, on the desk. I could call for help. The front door. It's the only way out. If I can reach it, I still have a chance. Seems to me help would take time to arrive, so I go for the door. Doesn't work, and lengthy quick time event sequence. 
as she fights against one malevolent intruder. With a step ladder, plus everyone places a step ladder next to their front door. We're doing okay at this point. Even managed to get one of those twisty ones there. Look. Two ninjas. Why does she have this weird sort of little passage thing anyway? I failed that twisty one, but... Succeed in that one. Wow. You'll notice the fact that they're coming on from all sides, paying no attention to the laws of physics. Might give you a bit of a hint as to what's actually going on here. in the bathroom, sound of heartbeats, and she wakes up. And in this section, that's pretty much all the introduction you get to her. She doesn't even have a name at this point, she is still playable character number four, whose relevance to the plot has yet to be determined. It's actually quite a cool little section. Anyway, back to Ethan. Well, we're here with ICN, and the big news story is why does everybody have the same umbrella? God damn it, my kitchen table really sucks. We open this mysterious letter. The game apparently forgetting that we'd already opened it. When the parents came home from church, all their children were gone. They searched and called for them. They cried and begged. But it was all to no avail. The children had never been seen again. This time, we find the locker ticket that has been sent with the letter. I don't know whether it was there before, or or whether he's now received a second mysterious letter, but whatever, whatever. he's been sent a locker ticket, ticket like the um, guy in the shop. That letter might be linked to Sean's disappearance. I need to show it to the police. See, he says that about showing the letter to the Looks police, like the which to is locker. obviously what you do. But he doesn't. He never does. It's really aggravating. Instead, you're about to see him go through this series of secret Mr. Morris, messages. Mr. Mr. Morris! Goddamn reporters. They've been camped outside my house all day. It would presumably be possible for him to exit through the back door, but I decide he needs Mr. to face his fears. Can you confirm that your son has disappeared? Do you think the origami Mr. Mr. Mars, get another car. Mr. Mars, I'm going to walk disappear. straight to that car Mars, without no way. Are you worried your son might Mr. Mars, be dead? do you suspect anyone, Mr. Mars? Do you know the investigators have any leads? You lost your son in the park. How do you feel about that? Mr. Mars, can you confirm that your son you has disappeared? Your son is still alive? Do you know I can get How a black exactly umbrella? Your son Mr. Mars! Mr. Mars! Mr. Mars, please, few words for ICN. Are you worried your son might be dead? So here we are at the train station, 
And obviously Ethan does not deal well with crowds. Gonna gonna have to make it through the crowd. I can't can't take crowds. Just can't handle it. I I can't make it. Too many people. Too many people. Breathe in, breathe out. But yeah, he doesn't take the letter to the police. He doesn't take the locker key to the police. When he finds the th what's in the locker, he doesn't take that to the police. In fact, he basically just fucking ignores the police. So again, you end up with this situation where you're railing against the stupidity of the character you're playing as. But anyway, weird sequence. In fairness, Jason. the whole weird collapsing thing makes it considerably easier to move through a crowd. Jason. Jason. disappears as soon as you get to him. Blah, 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 blah. No one comes to help him either. Ignorant little dicks. But anyway, we're there. Line 18, box number 3. to find a shoebox. Does he take that to the police? No! Anyway, meanwhile, at Creepy Hotels Incorporated, Ethan, apparently hiding out from reporters, hiding out from the world, has hired a room. Thoughts? Am I the one who, who put this box in the locker? I don't remember. A shoe box. What's the connection with Sean's disappearance? Inside the box, we find 
a mobile phone and SIM, a gun and five origami figures. First up, the bear marks number one. Unraveling it reveals, are you prepared to show courage to save your son? Joe's Garage and Parking Lot, 488 Roosevelt Avenue, Lexington. A challenge. How far are you prepared to go to save someone you love? Five origami figures. Each figure is a trial. Each trial provides letters. The letters reveal an address. He leaves the box here. Why does he leave the box here? Wouldn't it be quicker to take the box with him? Then he wouldn't have to keep coming back here for the box. You know, given that his son's in a great drowning in rainwater and all. Anyway. Moving on, I'm playing as Norman again. Norman, one of the most boring names in the world. The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He doesn't impulse, but plans his crimes in a very meticulous fashion. He doesn't have anything personal against the victims. That's why he covers their faces with mud, to make them anonymous. Why does he kill them if he doesn't have anything against them? For him, they're more of an image, a symbol. That's probably why he gives him an origami figure and an orchid as gifts to apologize for what he's done to them. Very interesting. And where does all that get us? It would be either aggressive or calm. The best way to attract predators is to be familiar with questions. his behavior. That may be true in novels, but there's a child's life at stake here. Continue, Jaden. One detail attracted my attention. The interval between the time when a victim disappears and the time when the body is found ranges from three to five days. But the rainfall is always at stitches, give or take 10%. What on earth does that mean? All the victims were drowned in rainwater. The killer kills only in the fall when there is plenty of rain. It could be that he puts them in some sort of well or tank that is open to the skies and that fills up with rainwater. The more it rains, the less time the victim has to live. It's this sort of then elaborate I studied the time limit. distribution of the murders. Generally, a killer commits his first murder to where he lives, so he has a safe place to flee to if any complications arise. The more confident he becomes, the further he roams from his base. By analyzing the locations where the victims disappeared, I was able to isolate a zone where the killer might live. And, and what size is this, uh, zone? For the moment, about 10 square miles. Ah, oh, great. There must be a dozen people live in that sort of area. You get a question in one by one? The more clues we get, the more we can reduce the zone. We can then cross-check it with our list of suspects and identify the killer. So what's next? There are two suspects whose psychological profile might fit and can be connected to the comfort zone. I'd like to question them. Ah, damn it. What a time with this bullshit. The killer's out there somewhere, we gotta get off our asses and find him. The killer is no ordinary murderer. He is intelligent, organized, and methodical. You won't find him by patrolling the streets. Tell me, Agent Jaden, did you get your vast experience on the job, or did you just fucking read about it in some school book? Goddamn college, boy. I came here to find a killer, and that is exactly what I'm gonna do. With or without your fucking help. Fucking asshole! That's enough! How did this guy get a job in the police force? You said it I don't see the point of investigating the killer and trying to track down where he might live. How does that help us find him? If the weather forecasts are right, 
Less than 72 hours. So, potential suspect number one. Excuse me, Jehovah's Witnesses. No answer. We waste our time coming here. Maybe we should have a little look inside anyway. There's nobody home. There is now. I'm not sure that's entirely legal. Call the cops. It's a religious weirdo. A really, Looks really like Nathaniel religious Williams weirdo. is a pretty religious guy. He's a god fearing idiot waiting for the end of the world. We questioned him a few months back because he was causing a disturbance in the park. He was ranting and raving. He said he heard voices. Had this idea in his sick little head that I was the Antichrist. I had come to Earth to persecute him. He was real twisted. Obviously, this is not the killer. It would be far too easy for this guy to be the killer. But anyway, we investigate, look at the crosses and shit. The guy's taking a break from reality, hold up here in this crazy apartment. All the signs of a mystical obsessive neurosis compounded by a persecution complex. You don't have to be a profiler to see he's not a killer. We're wasting our time here. Yeah, he never goes outdoors, basically. It's stifling in here. And those haven't been opened in years. Blah, 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 look around. Excuse me. Good timing, Nathaniel. Just the man we're looking for. The angels and ministers of grace defend us. I'm Agent Norman Jaden, FBI. I'd like to ask you a few questions. As God is my witness, I haven't done anything. I'm innocent. Relax. Nobody's accusing you of anything. We just want to talk. Where do you work, Nathaniel? Do you have a job? My sole occupation is praying to the all-merciful Lord for the salvation of humanity. So how do you afford the apartment? Why all the crucifixes? You afraid of something? The hour is nigh, and the wrath of God shall strike men down. I am preparing for the end of the world. Nathaniel, do you remember where you were last Tuesday at 4.30 p.m.? Here? I was here. I was praying. All day. Was there anybody with you? No. No, I was alone. What about the voices, Nathan? Do you still hear the voices? We know who talks to you, don't we, Nathaniel? Oh, we both know who talks to you. Don't speak that name. What does he say to you, Nathaniel? I can't talk about it. You mustn't talk about it. He orders you to go and do pray, doesn't he? He needs more and more. No! You mustn't mention him! You'll bring him here! He told you to go and find that kid in the park! The voices tormented you all night long! You wanted them to stop, didn't you, Nathaniel? Stop! Stop! That's enough! 
So you're them to make them stop. You took that boy with you and you drowned him. Isn't that right? No! Stop! Stop! You killed them, didn't you, Nathaniel? Are you gonna confess, you bastard? You are the Antichrist. Put down the gun, I Nathaniel. I shall you to your father in hell. He is the son Twice of Satan. He was sent to Earth to destroy us. For Christ's sake, shoot! Calm down, Nathaniel. Nobody here wants to hurt you. Put the gun down. Lieutenant Blake is gonna leave our planet right now and return to the what? realm of shadows. Creature of darkness, I do beseech you to return to the realm of shadows and leave our Nathaniel in peace. Team, you shall regret confronting the emissary of the Lord. You shall know divine power. Keep calm. Everything is gonna be fine, Nathaniel. Christ, all powerful. Defend us in our battle with the forces of evil. Protect us from the cunning and wiles of the demon. May God Almighty manifest the power of his empire. And may divine power cast Satan and all the other spirits that prowl the war search of souls into the darkest depths of hell. I'm here to help you, Nathaniel. To get rid of the voices in your head. But you have to trust me. Back away. Slowly. Drop it. Drop it, Nathaniel. Put your hands on your head. Turn around. Motherfucker! In the name of the Lord, I exorcise thee, Satan. Okay, freak, the show's over. You're under arrest. Pretty damn cool under the circumstances. I would've just shot him. A gun isn't the answer to every problem, Blake. Maybe not, but most of the time it helps. Could they have made Blake any more unlikable? Anyway, another Shelby chapter. in which he actually doesn't beat someone up. Which is uh, quite a miracle for Shelby. Answer. Baby screaming inside. Not a promising start. Suddenly the front door is unlocked. Anybody home? This is Bowles. It's a suicide note.
Shelby to the rescue. Mr. Bowles! Mr. Bowles, are you there? I'm gonna call an ambulance. No, I, I don't want to go to the hospital. Please. Okay. You got something around here I can dress this one with? Backed yeah. down remarkably I easily, didn't so. you? Okay, don't move. I'll be right back. How is she even conscious the amount of blood she'd have lost? Let's see. I need this, and this, and this. I'm here for you, Susan. You'll be all right. I'll take care of you. <gasps> stay with me, Susan. Susan, do you hear me? Susan, stay with me. Can you hear me? Stay with me. Oh, come on. There, I done what I can. That should stop the bleeding. Well, luckily the wounds aren't too deep. Hey, how are you feeling? You okay? Oh yeah, I'm fine. My baby. My baby needs me. Right. You stay there. I'll take care of the baby. Okay? Do you know what to do? With a baby, I mean. I'm a private eye. There's nothing I can't do. <laughs> Her name is Emily. Gotcha. So yeah, baby care. I was a private eye when I walked in here, and now I'm a babysitter. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, blood. Seventh generation gaming. Washing your hands. Hi there, Emily. So, what seems to be the problem, huh? Oh, going by the smell, I got a pretty good idea. Changing a baby's nappy. Okay. How do you do this again? There you go, fresh new baby. <laughs> that should feel better. Right, Emily? Matter. I thought we solved the problem. Of course. Now I know why you're crying, my little peachy poop. Mother Shelby to the rescue. Why is she crying? I'll ask Susan. She'll know what to do. I'm not sure how he can hold two contradictory thoughts in his head at the same time either. I get that they're opposite op options for the player, but whatever. I guess I better warm this thing up. But yeah, no need to bother the mother. She's sort of recovering from a suicide attempt. Emily, 
Are you hungry? Huh? You hold on. I'll just tilt this bottle a little bit so you don't choke. It's a tender and caring scene, which is why you're about to see me get frustrated out of my mind. Oh, good job, Emily. Hmm? You're feeling good now, right? <laughs> now, I'm going to rock you very gently so you can have a nice little sleep. You have to rock the baby. To rock the baby, you first perform this motion slowly and gently. You then perform the opposite motion, slowly and gently. And then the opposite motion again, slowly and gently. But then... Sometimes the controller doesn't register when you move the analog stick in the right direction and you can't let go of the stick and let the stick return to neutral so that it will sense that you're moving the stick in the right direction because as soon as you do, you've failed the movement. Consequently, I don't know how many times I had to try this, but rocking this baby to sleep was fucking difficult. And so I know, I know this is supposed to be a nice... Caring and tender little scene. And then I put it in the... The baby in the cot too fucking quickly and I have to do the whole thing again. Oh. Sorry, kid. So for me, the dominant it, right? emotion of this scene was frustration. rock bye baby. Go to fucking sleep. This control scheme sucks. See my frustration. Once it starts to fill up, once the square fills up, it's fine. If I can't get the square to fill up because it won't register the movement, then I know that I'm going to fail the sequence. Anyway, eventually I managed to succeed and very gently put Emily back into her cot. Whew. Now time for actual questioning. Eventually, when I can figure out the control scheme and constantly fucking changing camera angles causing me just describe about four circles there before finally managing to walk through the door. Thanks for looking after my baby. I didn't want to leave her. I just couldn't cope anymore. Not having Jeremy around. He was such a good boy. I can't understand why anyone would want to hurt him. Do you take care of this baby on your own? Doesn't Jeremy's father live with you anymore? He disappeared. The day after Jeremy. I don't know what happened to him. Maybe... Maybe he couldn't take it. Ever since I've had to look after Emily all on my own, and I couldn't do it anymore. I understand. Did your husband say anything before he disappeared? Did he leave a note or something? No. He left us without a word, and... There was just a cell phone. A cell phone? Yeah, I, I found a cell phone in his dresser. I'm sure it wasn't his. I'd never seen it before. I tried to turn it on, but it didn't work. Do you still have it? Yeah, it's 
It's uh, it's in a drawer in the living room. You can have it if you'd like. I'm sure it's of more use to you than to me. Do you have any family or anybody to help you? Yeah, my mother. I didn't want to ask her for anything. We don't really get along, but I guess I'm out of options. Well, look after yourself and Emma. I will. I promise. So another clue. Starting to find things that the murderer sends to the families of his victims. And for now, that's where we will leave it. We resume in the next part with Ethan Mars and the first trial, the Bear Trial. See you then.